much, uh, Chairman. Uh, Ambassador Harsh Bardhan, Sri Lanka Foreign Secretary of India. Mr. MP Vesbalwa, Chairman, Asian Conference, uh, Governing Council, Asian Conference, Asian Conference. Mr. Sabia Sachi Data, Executive Director, Asian Conference. <coughs> Distinguished participants from Japan and Northeast uh, India, ladies and gentlemen, namaskar and good morning. It is my great pleasure to uh, address you all today. Thank you very much for this opportunity. First, I'd like to thank the Asian Conference for arranging this uh, symposium, connecting the intellectuals of Japan and India and bringing our attentions to uh, India's Northeast. I'm pleased that my embassy could support uh, this important event. Our first dialogue to focus on uh, intellectual exchanges with the Northeast. The Northeast is full of potentials, not only for its own sake or for India's further development, but also for the stability and the prosperity of a wider region. That is why Japan has been a staunch and reliable partner of the Northeast. As all of you know, Japan has historical ties with the Northeast, but I believe such ties could be further strengthened by connecting peoples of Japan and Northeast, not just at the governmental level, but also between the intellectuals as well as at the grassroots level. I have recently had a privilege of visiting at the state of Assam with the external affairs minister, Dr. Jayashankar, as uh, Mr. Chairman just mentioned. I told the Assamese and the other Northeastern people how much I felt at home being there. Indeed, any Japanese person who visits the Northeast would find natural affinities and be drawn closer to the region. Likewise, I believe Northeastern people, if they visit Japan, would uh, find similar bonds. That shows there exist good possibilities for the peoples of Japan and Northeast to get better connected. This symposium presents a very good opportunity to open the door to such immense possibilities by promoting intellectual dialogue between the two peoples. The Northeast stands on a just a strategically important place to realize a free and open Indo-Pacific. In Assam, Dr. Jayashankar said, historically India was a great country only when Eastern India was prosperous and secure. I fully agree with him. The Act East, Act East Forum embodies our commitment to the development of the Northeast, anchored on the trust and friendship that Japan and India have long nurtured. Japan is uh, the only country that holds a dedicated forum with India for the development of the Northeast. At the end of January, I had, a, I had an honor to co-chair the fifth round meeting of Act East Forum, together with Foreign Secretary, Mr. Uh, Schwingler, and had good fruitful discussions to provide orientation for our future cooperation in this region. Then in mid-February, as I said, I paid a visit to Assam with Dr. Jayashankar, which was my second visit actually, to demonstrate our commitment to this region. On that occasion, I had uh, meaningful interactions with chief minister and other leading ministers of uh, Assam, learning firsthand the priorities of the state and the region. Today, first, uh, I'd like to talk about how we can unleash the vast potentials of the Northeast. I would say enhancing connectivity is the first key to unlock them. It is both natural and necessary for India to enhance connectivity in the Northeast and to its Eastern border. 
is, it is not simply because of geopolitical reality that exists at the Indian Western border, but because the future of Asia lies in that direction. The link to the East from Bangladesh to ASEAN and to Japan is a source of further growth of India and its Northeast. On the ground, Japan has been actively promoting connectivity both within the region and with neighboring countries. Our nat national highway projects, be, be it in Assam, Meghalaya, Mizoram, or Tripura, will be extended to the border of Bangladesh. Japan and India have been working together road connection improvement projects in Bangladesh as well. With these road network projects, the Northeast will find outlet, outlet to the Bay of Bengal, to the Indian Ocean, and to ASEAN. Being able to utilize such ports as in Chittagon or Matabari, the Northeast will no longer be a landlocked place. Let me tell you my personal uh, experience. Like the Northeast, my hometown, north of uh, Hamamatsu city in Shizuoka prefecture is surrounded by beautiful mountains and uh, segmented by big river. The river used to function as uh, the inland waterways to transport. The Brahmaputra river in Assam is also an important traffic means. But this magnificent river disrupts road traffic. People have to make a long detour to cross the river. However, the people of Northeast will have a wonderful experience shortly. Japan and India are supporting the construction of Dubri Purubari Bridge connecting Dubri in Assam and uh, Purubari in uh, Meghalaya. The founding foundation laying ceremony was just recently held with the presence of Prime Minister Modi. This is going to be a longest river bridge in India, 19 kilometers in length, and to cut short the traveling time across the river from more than eight hours to less than 30 minutes. Furthermore, the bridge will create a corridor stretching from Bhutan through Assam, Meghalaya to Bangladesh. This is the power of connectivity. Now I want to introduce to you one word in my hometown dialect. It is Yaramaika. I would translate this as a uh, give it a try spirit. I believe this spirit is the second key to unlocking the potentials of Northeast. My hometown Hamamatsu city is a mid-sized city, yet it, it has produced a host of entrepreneurs who drove the post-war economic miracle of Japan. Those who started such big companies as Honda, Suzuki Motors, and Yamaha are all from Hamamatsu city. My hometown bred these energetic entrepreneurs breed with give it a try spirit. I feel a similar vibe existing in the Northeast. How can we add value to bamboo, which are abundant in the Northeast? How can we further ele elevate talented uh, human resources in the region? What should be done in the region when healthcare and sanitation have become more important than before after COVID-19? I wish to see the people of the North, Northeast to exhibit the same give it a try spirit and taken up these challenges in an even bolder manner. I should add that only a spirit, spirit is not enough. Obviously, ecosystem which would nurture and develop talented uh, entrepreneurs is needed. In the case of Hamamba City, there was a very good uh, engineering institute to provide entrepreneurs 
with academic and uh, intellectual backups. I'm aware there are many higher, prestigious higher educational institutions in the Northeast. These institutions are indispensable partners to work with. Also, human capital is priceless resources. The people in the North East excel in the service industry. That is because they know how to take care of the others. This is only possible if they can grasp the situation well and think about what their clients need. Uh, exactly the qualities to be astute entrepreneurs. I encourage the people in the Northeast to think about what their region needs in a similar way. While Japan is ready to continue our support to the Northeast, true prosperity will only be achieved by indigenous entrepreneurs. I hope a sprouting pool of talents in the Northeast will bring about innovative ideas for their hometown, as my predecessors have done for my own hometown and the country as a whole. When I visited Assam last month, I took a ride on e-rickshaw, which was built in Assam by a startup company created by young Japanese entrepreneurs. Combining the tradition of India with a new idea, they are providing eco-friendly mobility solutions to the people in Northeast and other parts of India. This is just one small example. I would like to emphasize that Japan is also ready to think together with you and with it with the Yaramaika spirit. First, we are keen to collaborate with the Northeast to create bamboo value chains. Second, we want to assist Japanese language courses in the Northeast so that uh, young talents can find internship or job opportunities in Japan through the technical intern training program or specified skilled worker program. Third, we are ready to take up challenges of healthcare and sanitation in Assam, which is the hub uh, in hub of Northeast by strengthening its healthcare system and uh, by constructing water and sewage facilities. Protecting the rich natural endowments of the Northeast can also bring about added value. Japan is supporting the conservation of forests in Sikkim, Tripura, Nagaland, and Meghalaya and assisting better livelihood of agri uh, farmers. I'm proud to say that uh, our project in Sikkim has led to the designation of uh, Kanchenzonga National Park as the first UNESCO mixed heritage site of India. This example illustrates how Japan and India can cooperate to make one plus one produce more than two. Taking up uh, challenges will be easier if uh, we have friends to share both the hardship and the joy to overcome it. Another thing I want to see with the uh, give it a try spirit is much closer and uh, more frequent exchanges between our peoples. When we shut off current COVID-19 craze, I hope many youth in the Northeast will visit Japan. As I mentioned, these there are opportunities with the TITP and the specified skilled worker system. My embassy has also invited about 100 youth of the Northeast to Japan for a one week tour to discover our country. They visited not only Tokyo, but also other cities like Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They learned Japanese uh, history and know how to overcome natural disasters. With their experiences in Japan, 
I hope these youngsters will be will grow into the core for furthering the future partnership between Japan and in Northeast. Just one week tour to Japan will make a big difference in the minds of Indian youth and ignite their own let's give it a try spirit. I'm happy to note that uh, those who participated in the embassy program have formed some Japan friendship associations in Meghalaya and Nagaland. I really welcome these initiatives. Furthermore, my embassy organized a dialogue with states in Ceylon, Meghalaya in November 2018. This is our outreach program to various states in India. In the dialogue held in Meghalaya, Honorable Chief Minister, Mr. Konrad Sanguma participated. Recently, uh, I had a chance to talk with the Chief Minister and uh, Chief Secretary of Meghalaya in New Delhi, and they shared with, uh, with me the potentials of Meghalaya. Agribusiness, food processing, renewable energy, ecotourism, caregiving, to name a few. In Meghalaya, by the way, I heard that the Cherry Blossoms Festival is uh, held every year. Cherry blossoms are cherished in Japan and uh, their beauty is engraved in our heart. I cannot feel it a mere coincidence that uh, cherry blossoms are cherished in the Northeast. We have something common deep inside. I'm sure we can let something bloom through further dialogues. The intellectual dialogue we are having today can inspire and stimulate our give it a try or let us do it spirit. Then a virtuous cycle starts. Let us discuss what kind of untapped possibilities there are for us. Let us see if there are any low hanging fruits that we can pick together. There can be a host of interesting ideas to explore. How can we combine road connectivity with inland waterways? What is needed to attract investment to the Northeast? Are there anything we can do to bring in more tourists so that uh, they can enjoy the rich natural and cultural attractions of the region? How can we advance intellectual dialogue with the Northeast? I hope uh, today's uh, dialogue discussions will ample shed light on these questions. Intellectual dialogue will make, it, make us rediscover each other. I believe it is the Northeast that holds the ticket to broaden our already rich bilateral relations as we approach the 70th anniversary of diplomatic relations between uh, India and Japan next year. And beyond our close ties with the Northeast, we can secure a truly free, open, and inclusive Indo-Pacific. Thank you very much. Daniel.